Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here. Welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video. Recently, a popular request given to me was to list off and rank my favorite Realm of the Mad God classes, going through all 14 of them from least to greatest. So, Realm has quite the cast of characters you can play as. All 14 classes are different and unique to some extent, and so I want to make it very clear that I do not dislike a single class in the game. There are plenty that I use over others, and there are a couple that I rarely ever play, but I don't think that any of them are bad. Like, if I had to use any class in the game to build myself back up from the ground, I could do it with most of them, if not all of them, because they're that capable. But obviously the whole point of this video is for me to rank them in terms of my favorites. And something like this is very subject to change. I'm not expecting this to be set in stone, especially with all of the alterations that have been made to the classes over the years. Changes to stats, rebalancing, whiz mod, new items and sets that get introduced to make classes more viable. And sometimes I just feel like playing a class one day. Really, I'll be ranking these classes on a combination of how often I play them, how fun they are to play, and how effective they are for both survival and getting loot. The class that can strike the best balance among all of those qualities is probably going to make it to number one. Alright, so let's get started. All the way at number 14, we got the Huntress. Got nothing against the Huntress. Perfectly fine class, got good DPS, you can throw a Doombo on it for crazy damage, above average range and defense, got a cool ability that you can throw to trap a whole bunch of enemies at one time, and it does have a few niche scenarios where it really shines. However, the Archer exists, a class that has identical stats and items, with the exception of a more versatile ability. The Quiver has a lower mana cost and, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to time, and that unfortunately rules out the Huntress as obsolete for me. It's not a bad class, it, in fact it's almost identical to the Archer, which is a great class, but because it's so similar, but slightly inferior, I never play it. I just, I have no reason to. Number 13 is the Mystic, another class that I think is Great! You got that great safe range of a staff, orbs have been tinkered with over time, stasising enemies is great for rushing and crowd control. My biggest gripe with the Mystic used to be its lower DPS, but even that's been changed. I really don't have a solid reason why I don't play this class, I just like the other staff classes more, they're a little easier to pick up and play. And with me specifically, every time I play the Mystic I'm always preoccupied with not stasising the wrong enemies, because if I do that, then I have to wait for them to get unstasis, and it gets kind of tedious. It's a small thing for sure, but I'm, I'm kind of splitting hairs here anyway. Number 12 is the Assassin. It's kind of a hard class to talk about because when I think about him, he's really cool. Whenever I sit down and play the Assassin, I have a pretty good time. He's fast, he's got really good DPS actually. An ability similar to the Huntress's, only it damages over time, and you can stack them with enough mana, and even damage enemies while they're invulnerable, which is pretty cool if you manage to land it before their shield goes up. But when it comes down to it, the Assassin doesn't have have much else to offer. He's fast and he has pretty good damage, but his ability is situational. It doesn't always shine, often bosses die before you can even use it, and with how many invulnerability periods specific bosses can have, it can be awkward timing your poisons. It's great for wine cellars, and again, it is fun to mess around with, but it's not my ideal class. Number 11 is the Rogue, arguably one of the best classes in the game when put into the right hands, and I agree. With proper mana control, you can solo just about everything, even at low level. However, similar to the Assassin, I find the Rogue to be a little too one note. It's a fantastic class for rushing, but I can't help but feel like I'm doing the same thing when I play it. Go invisible, run in, get to safety, go invisible again, repeat. Very effective, but uh, just not my thing. Number 10, the Priest. This and the Knight are two of the safest classes in Realm of the Mad God for very different reasons. The Priest has extremely long range and an ability that instantly heals you and everyone around you. And now with recent updates can also give you party effects. The various tomes have their own unique abilities. Armoring, status effect removal, the Tome of Pain even does damage. And the addition of Wizmod definitely helped him stand out from the pet update. But his damage is very unremarkable. In fact, it's the lowest of any class. So that does make it lose a few points for me. Number nine. Warrior. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we now have the highest damaging class. The Warrior is a tank with heavy armor. It has the high damaging power of a sword. The helmet lets you go speedy, which is great for rushing. And the Berserk bonus allows you to out damage almost every other player around you. Really, there's not much else to say about the Warrior. He's great at what he does, and what he does is great. Number eight, the Trickster. This is not a class that I play often, and that's why it's so low here. But when I do, I always have a really good time. Being able to teleport anywhere with the low mana cost of the tier 0 prism, it's great for getting around and dodging enemies, and it's fun to mess around with on downtime. However, he is a bit of a skill shot. He doesn't have the same versatility as other classes, not that that's a bad thing, but it's for that very reason that I don't play him as much as maybe others would. Number 7 
is the Sorcerer. Right at the halfway mark, we've got Yin Yarn's favorite class, and one that I underestimated for the longest time. It really is an under-the-radar kind of class. No one ever talks about it or thinks about it. He's just there on the menu. You see him? All right. I'm gonna go play Knight now, but I was pretty surprised at how effective he was in most areas. He's got really long range and can pierce thanks to the wand, but with an ability that auto-homes on multiple targets in front of you, and can be spammed rather frequently thanks to the combination of low mana cost, high amounts of magic in general, and the inclusion of Wizmod. That being said, his DPS still isn't outstanding, but he is a really unique niche class that I like to mess around with. Number six the Necromancer. Maybe it's because he's really similar to the wizard, but Necro is something that I always like to have in my character slots as a backup. Now that they've buffed his attack up to 75, his overall damage is nothing to really worry about anymore. And his skull not only damages groups of enemies, but you can steal their health and give it to you if you ever feel like you're about to be popped or you're running low. Obviously, he was one of the classes that was hit the hardest whenever pets were changed, but with a few stat modifications and items made specifically for it, the Necro has become one of my favorite classes. And it's not a case of the Archer and Huntress where the Wizard and Necro are so similar that I only pick one, they have their own differences to where I play them almost equally. Number 5. Ninja. Y'all knew it was coming at some point, but it was all a matter of where. Just because he's my mascot doesn't necessarily mean he's my favorite class. He's one of my favorites, but not my number one. The ninja is a class that I love mostly in concept rather than execution. Ninjas in general are just cool for me. I like running around knowing I'm a ninja. And on paper, the ninja does have some really good perks. Extremely high DPS with a katana that can pierce and was thankfully given more range. An ability that essentially lets you go perma speedy. And the shuriken is a great skill shot for hitting bosses at long range to secure your loot. And of course I get to dye my ninja sky blue and live the dream. But he is a glass cannon. As much fun as he is to run around, he can't take much. It's a really easy class to die on, especially because with all that damage you want to get close to the enemy and just fire away, but you can't always do that. And that unfortunately is what brings down the ninja a lot for me. The fact of the matter is, I don't play this class as much as I like it, if that makes sense. Number four. The Knight. LLXD. Alright, where's my check? There really is no more broken class when fully maxed out than the Knight. Extremely high defense, an ability that used to obliterate most bosses by stunning them and preventing them from damaging you. The Knight is the ultimate tank, and because of the way the pets were changed, it became an even easier class to exploit because of your health regeneration, mana regeneration to use your stun more. Recently, they have been redesigning bosses to go invulnerable more often and be stun immune, plus pet stasis is a very real status effect now. But the real reason why Knight isn't number one is because He's kind of boring after a while. All that power is great, but you get kind of numb to it. It's like One Punch Man. All that strength is only enjoyable if your opponent is formidable. Number three. Wizard. Easily one of the best classes in Realm of the Mad God for anyone to play. It has extremely high DPS, not just in its weapon, but also its ability. The safe range of 8.6, allowing you to stand back and unleash that onslaught of fury. Yes, it has low defense and average vitality and speed, but who cares when everything is already dead? So you can't rush. Fine, I'll take it. Now, you may think that because the wizard is so effective that he would kind of fall into the same category as the knight where he's really good but gets kind of boring after a while because things get easy. See, normally I would agree with that, but for some reason, the wizard is something that I can always count on. See, unlike the knight, I'm not just tanking shots from everything. The wizard is not a tank, so I do have to dodge. And unlike the shield, where you just walk up to an enemy and stun everything in sight, timing a perfect spell bomb is still really satisfying and fun to do, and I'm always looking for chances to do it. And when you get loot as often as when playing a wizard, it takes a while to get sick of that. Number two. The Archer. Really hard not to put this at the number one spot. The Archer is what I love about the wizard, but more unique. The spell bomb is a cool ability and all, and I like the whole skill shot time of it, but the archer's quiver is far more dynamic. Not only is it also a skill shot, but it pierces through enemies. One of the most satisfying things in Realm is being able to hit multiple targets with a single quiver shot. It feels great. And on top of that, you have the paralyzed status effect, which is great in almost every scenario. Plus, Doombow and Coral Bow and Thousand Shot, and the Quiver of Thunder. These are all great items that are fun to use and are very effective. The Archer is just as much fun and just as effective as the Wizard, but I find him to be a bit more interesting, and that's what puts him at number two. And by process of elimination, you should all know that the number one spot belongs to 
the Paladin. He used to be the lesser of the three melees because he didn't have the high defense of the knight or the high DPS of the warrior. But now that has been flipped around because the Paladin has been turned into one of the most versatile classes in the game, but is still unique and interesting and effective in a solo and team scenario. You've got the high damage of a sword and defense of heavy armor, but the interesting concept of a seal, healing everything around you, increasing your maximum health cap, and giving damaging to everyone around you. This helps keep you alive, the people around you alive, Alive, you kill things faster, it speeds up the pace of the game because you don't have to spend as much time regenerating health, and in my case if you have an Oreo you can mess around with the invincibility on that thing which is really fun, and for the longest time he was my oldest character until things happened, but his interesting ability and overall versatility are what put him at the number one spot. And those are my favorite Realm of the Mad God classes ranked from least to greatest. As I said in the beginning, I don't expect these to remain in the same spot forever, in fact looking at it now I might have even changed a few, but if I were to give you an answer right now, that would be it. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.